right, so it's a Saturday now. We're gonna get started, and there it is, kind of built up. It's looking sweet. So we're getting the car on jack stands right now, and uh, gonna start disassembling in the AOD out of there, and then making the accommodations to get the T5 in. But yeah, it's Saturday morning, and uh, we're getting started. All right, well, we're underway on our uh, 94 to 95 AODE to T5 swap. We've uh, started by taking out the battery and the battery box. We should get the battery box out. It's just these two uh, eight millimeter bolts here on the side. You'll take it out, put mine in the trunk, put those bolts back in so you don't lose them. Uh, <clears throat> just started for the, to get the top end work. Cause there's not much work you actually have to do in here other than uh, getting your automatic tranny fluid lines disconnected which we've done and uh where they actually made here I, I heard you can just take them out and leave them it's a closed system so any fluid that was left in here it'll remain in there and won't leak out so uh we'll just remove these automatic transmission lines because we won't need them at all because uh, we're going to be in a t5 manual now which doesn't need cooling lines We've also cracked all the bolts off of uh, the seat. You're gonna wanna get the seat out because when it comes to changing the pedal assembly, you're, just, you're not gonna have room. You're gonna wanna lay on your back here and uh, it just it does best to get the seat out to give you that extra room for when you're uh, doing your pedal assembly. Seats are really easy to come out. It's just uh, four 16 millimeter bolts, two on uh, the front, two on the back. You'll do the two in the front, slide your seat all the way forward, lean it back. And you have two more under here, also 16 millimeters. Uh, you can't get these with the socket, so you will need to use a box end wrench. Uh, these are aftermarket bucket seats, but same with the, the stock seat. You'll have a bar like this, so using a socket's not gonna get it. You'll need a box end wrench. We'll get the seat out and it'll give us that room. And uh, there we are with the seat removed. So as you can see, a lot more room to work. I like to put the bolts back so I know where they went and I don't lose any. But a lot more room and you're gonna want it because you're gonna be under here uh, for a good amount of time when it comes to switching your pedal assembly, running your clutch cable. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna drop the steering rack because uh, a lot of people think you actually have to, but I learned that if you just take the quadrants off, those pedals will go flat against the uh, floorboard there and you are able to maneuver the automatic assembly and uh the clutch and brake assembly out uh without taking the steering column which i've seen a lot of other people do uh, on the both parts cars to get the parts we did that without removing the steering and it worked fine um so yeah i do recommend taking the seat out it'll give you that room for when you tackle this monster uh which will be the hardest part of this job i believe while you're also at it, I mean, you can ditch your console bezel. You're gonna need it out regardless. And uh, you do that just by pulling up on the sides. It's got a clip in there and it just seems to pop out. One's on the bottom, you pull up hard, pops out, you hear it. There is one ground wire under here to the, uh, <clears throat> to the lighter and just to remove that. You just pull this little clip off here. That comes off and then this one on the back, this rubber one, it's on an all thread. You uh, know, for both, for even for the uh, manual bezel, they're both the same and they will both have that, but that's how you remove it if you didn't know. And it'll just give you the room you need. Uh, I won't really go over how to take this off because it would just be to uh, the B&M hammer shifter which I don't know too many people that have it, but putting this on and taking this off is different than the stock one. Okay, so after you're gonna wanna get your exhaust out of the way. Now, if yours is completely stock, this, uh, I mean, the relevance of it is about the same, but I have a one piece X pipe with no cats and uh, some BBK shorty headers. So you'll wanna just break it down from the exhaust manifold or your headers first to give you the room to hang. Make sure to take your O2 sensors off You'll have two O2 sensors, one on each side. And to uh, disconnect them, all you wanna do is pinch this tab right here and pull out and they'll come apart. 
You'll let them hang. You can zip tie them up out of the way for removing your exhaust, but you'll want to do both. Next, you'll want to come where your pipe meets your exhaust manifold or your header, and you'll take off the two bolts that hold it. They're 18 millimeters. You'll have one above and below. It's best to use an impact wrench uh, because they will be on their tie. You might even need heat, uh, depending if they're still stock or if you've ever taken them off. So after you get both uh, 18 mils off, I already have, but it might be hung up on there or stuck. You'll just want to give it a good shake and it should separate. It'll hang down like this until you do the back. Like I said, mine is a custom X pipe. It's just one piece. So I just have it on some hangers back there with two 10 millimeter bolts. I can't quite remember what the stock ones were, but you'll want to release that. Cause you want to get this whole exhaust system out of the way. Cause next you have to get your drive line and you can't do any of that with the exhaust you can't even get the transmission out so we'll get the x pipe completely out of the way and go from there okay and there you have it one piece x pipe out of the way you'll want to store this somewhere uh just get it out of your way while you do the job it's a pretty big piece so get your exhaust out set it aside okay now with your x pipe out of your way or your exhaust You'll have the room to get your drive line out. You'll have the room to get your transmission out and you'll be able to break your transmission lines that are actually on the transmission now that you can get a wrench in there. So we're gonna do that next. That is a two 13 millimeters that you have to use with a box end wrench. We're gonna do that now. So you wanna come to the passenger side right above the top of the pan and you have two tranny lines and they go into the transmission there. You'll want to break these loose so they're free completely. You won't need them anymore because you're going to a T5. You don't need cooling lines. So once you break them loose, they are going to leak some fluid. Have no worries because you're getting rid of all this. So they are 213s. You'll loosen them, pull the fittings out, and then all you got to do is pull out. And now those lines are free. You'll see to the front, they hang down, and all we gotta do is finagle these out of here. And uh, I'm just gonna rip them out, but if you were trying to sell it as a swap or keep them in condition, you can. Uh, mine were already cut. So after you get your transmission lines out, to finish up the work on this side, running along it, just behind it, going towards the tail shaft, is the plug-in for the harness for the transmission. And you can do the same as the O2 sensor, you just push down on it and pull up and that disconnects on this side there's one on the other side i believe and then we can start working this harness out of here all right moving on to the driver's side of the car we'll start at the tail shaft side you have a connector here which is your speedo gear so this one's different than the o2 you'll actually pry up on this and pull it out So moving up closer to the engine, you'll run into this. And above that is another connector for the gear selection. You'll push it on this tab and pull that one out. And it's hard to see, but right above that, tucked way up there is one more connector. It's right here and you'll pull this tab and slide it forward and that one comes out as well all right moving back up to the motor for finishing out the trans harness so you want to come again to the passenger side and you'll see how it runs up here and it's normally held in on a, a clip back it's normally held in on a clip right here. You can just mount that clip off, bend it. You won't need it because you'll be switching for a trans harness if you picked one up. But it just comes right along here to the first part of the passenger firewall. And you have big one, which is engine harness. And this one here, which is your trans harness. And you'll just push that tab in and pull out. Transmission harness.
harness for the automatic ADE is disconnected and you can route that out or uh, to get it out of the way or you can wait until you actually get the transmission out and it'll come down with it. This will probably be the easiest part. You can do this now, but on the driver's side above the brake booster is gonna be a, this rubber grommet right here. And all you wanna do is pinch it and pull it and that's what it looks like. And that'll actually uncover the whole of the firewall where your cable is gonna run through. Or you can get a firewall adjuster, which is what I did, and that's where we're gonna drill it in, and we'll be able to tighten our uh, clutch cable from here, so we don't have to get under the car every time or jack it up to uh, adjust the cable. All right, next we're on the driver's side, and we're gonna wanna disconnect this shift cable, the automatic shift cable. It runs from the shifter up there and to the trans. So you want to break this nut free. That's going to be a 13. That's actually holding the cable on. That's a 13. That'll release the cable in the bracket. If you go back, that holds it. It's held in by two 10 millimeters right here. So you get those two 10s out. Now that's free. Keep this over the top of the cross member. Get this out of there. Another one holds it here. That's gonna be a 10 millimeter. We'll break that loose and we'll let it hang. So to release the cable, there's the two eight millimeters holding it right there. Where it meets the shifter itself. You just pry it off of this to the side. And it pops off like so. And your cable is free. We got our trans harness down and hanging. That's it right there. We're gonna go get this drive line out next. Now to get your drive line off, it's gonna be these four bolts. You got two on bottom, two on top. They are 21 points, so you will need a 12 millimeter, 21 point wrench. Now you'll want to put a mark because you want this if you're using your stock drive line to go back on the way it came off. I didn't have any colored paint pens, but you can see that I made a black mark with a Sharpie, a pretty bold one. So when I go to reinstall this, it goes on the way it came. You'll get the two bottom bolts off. The two top are hard to get to as is. So what you can do, slide back to the trans it's in park since you have everything disconnected using the stick above won't work and you can go reverse neutral and then you can use your foot and you can spin the drive line to get those other two on bottom go back push it forward twice reverse park and now you can get to these now once you get all four bolts out you'll simply push it forward towards the transmission and get a little space and you can let it hang on the ground now what I also like to do Oh, then now you can roll it with just the tire because you cut loose. So this is the mark that we had made where we want it to go back on. Sometimes those marks, I mean, depending on how long your project's sitting, they could disappear. So I like to put a zip tie. I like to put a zip tie where the marks were, so no matter how long <clears throat> it is till I get back to it, if the mark goes away, I know the zip line went to zip line. Now with the drive line hanging, you can rotate back to it where it meets the transmission, get a firm grip on it, pull up, 
slide back till it separates from the tail shaft. And let it down easy. And we will be using this drive shaft for the manual setup because I've read and asked a bunch of people and it is the same. Now it's time, drop the transmission. But first we'll take apart all of the console so we can uh, get that shifter out of there and make dropping it a lot easier. Okay, we'll get back in the car and we'll get the rest of this uh, center console out so we can remove our shifter. And uh, next step after that will be actually uh, removing the inspection plate, taking the torque converter nuts off and uh, prepping the tranny to get dropped. But we need that shifter off in order to do that. So we'll lift the lid here, move these two rubber tabs. There will be two Phillips. You'll remove those as well. And then all you do is pull up on this inner pretty hard. And that'll come out. It will reveal two eight millimeters down there. Or I'm sorry, they are seven, seven millimeters. And you have two sevens there as well. So once you have all that hardware out, you'll simply pull back, make sure your e-brake handle is up, and we'll go up and over. Now you leave the e-brake handle so you have enough room to get it up and over, and you can leave it to rest on there. Instead of unplugging all of these, if you just unplug it from the main harness here, then uh, you don't have to remove all of them. So we'll remove that. And this piece is good to come out now. Now we can get that shifter out. And uh, start installing them pedals. So there you go. I didn't make a video removing the shifter because it is a B&M hammer shifter. So it would be specific to that. But you will have one connector that you'll unplug here, followed by four eight millimeter bolts, two on bottom, two on top, and a Allen wrench key. I believe it is a four. And you'll release all those and that'll get your shifter out of here. Now I've read I will have to trim this about two inches to fit the T5, but uh, I've also read some people that have gone around without doing that. So we'll fit it up and uh, we'll see if we have to do any trimming, but that's what it's looking like and we're ready to get under and start dropping the transmission okay now we're back under the car we're going to start removing the transmission first steps first right behind the oil pan is this inspection cover it is held in by one 13 millimeter bolt you'll take that out and this cover will come off this will reveal uh your torque converter nuts but while we're already at it we might as well start by taking the starter out as well so if you look closer to the passenger side and straight up you will have your starter and it'll have one nut over it that is a 14 i don't know why i think maybe a ground strap or something mine doesn't have it and two 13s one being on the bottom and then one right up here, right under your exhaust manifold. So we'll get those out. Now, once you have those removed, you can just pull straight back. And let your starter come out. And we can set it right here on the side. That's what I did when I put this transmission in. But we'll be smarter this time and with that hole and the hole to the exhaust hanger we'll put a couple zip ties and we'll hang it since it can stay in the car during the rest of the uh, swap <clears throat> so after you get all that off you're gonna want to start removing your torque converter nuts that's the first thing to get in this tranny uh taken out of here so what i do i pop that cover i put one it's a 14 millimeter i think it's four four 14 millimeter bolts so you'll want two wrenches, both with 14 mils on them. And I toggle one, so because the motor's gonna spin, so you gotta toggle it. A lot of people do the crankshaft, but when you're by yourself, you can use the other uh, 
torque converter nuts to actually take it loose. So I toggle it on the one that I want and <clears throat> I get it loose. See that? It comes somewhat loose. Now that one's loose. So I want to leave it on so I can get this one, right? So I would just go in reverse now. Pull this one back down to me. It's too long. So this is my thing. I switch. And it comes around. It comes around, revealing the next one. We need a little more. So we get that. And put this one up here on this high one. Run it in reverse until it toggles. It's toggled. And like that, you got all your torque converter nuts off, which is good because now you're ready to put a jack underneath the transmission. All right, now you want to mount your tranny jack right underneath the bottom of that pan. I used a uh, ratchet but i just put a half hitch i pulled it really tight and put a half hitch in the end of it should hold it and there's going to be six 16 millimeter bolts that hold the transmission but you can't get the top to unless you take the cross member out and lower the tail shaft so we're going to start on that now to break your cross member loose it'll just be two 13 millimeter bolts on each side of it Make sure you have tension on the jack because this is going to be what lets it hang. So make sure you have tension on the jack and break these loose. Once you have your cross member bolts out, you'll want to lower the jack so the tail goes towards the ground. You got two bolts on bottom there. They're easy to get to on each side. That'll get four of them out. But the top two, you have to get over the top of this tail shaft. So that's why you have to lower it, otherwise there's no way to get to them. Okay, as you can see, I've come down quite a bit on the jack. The cross member is out of where it makes. You're gonna lose some fluid, cause it's full, but you'll come down a good amount. And now you can see those top two bolts right above those letters up there. That's how you get to those last two bolts. And you'll need a super long extension. So I went and bought a three foot at O'Reilly and that should do it. That's how I got it in last time. That's how I got it out. And this is the best way to get the top two bolts of those bell housing. So shit. I got my big three foot long extension. I have it lowered. I can reach that top bolt up there. And if you saw it, it just rocked back because that was the last bolt. So this thing is freed up. Now we're going to break it loose from the flex plate. Start lowering it. I might even grab someone to give me a hand so this thing don't slide off. I'm doing this by myself, so it's hard to get a video of lowering it, but I simply just grabbed the back of the tail shaft, gave it a shake and pull it back to get those torque converter nuts separated from the flex plate. And it rolled back. I had the clearance and then I just came around front, lowered it. And now I have to actually get it off that jack to the concrete because uh, I can't go up any higher and uh, I'll slide it out on the pan. Um, on the concrete and then it'll be out here. I'll put it next to the T5 so you can see uh, the difference. And there you have it. A-O-D-E out of the Mustang. Yeah, this thing is a monster. This is hard to move around by yourself, which is what I'm doing by myself. It's easily a hundred pounds more than the T5, which I was moving around the shop pretty easy by myself. So I mean, we're definitely getting a weight reduction getting rid of this. And, uh, I smelled a bunch of burnt tranny fluid, so I definitely did get life out of this thing, taking it to the racetrack. And, uh, but yeah, let's move on. Next, you're gonna wanna break your flex plate bolts loose, and this is going to be six 19 millimeter bolts. After you get your bolts out, you just simply push in, and your spacer and your flex plate will come out. You 
we've now removed everything that made this thing an automatic. And there you go. Everything taken off. I'm getting ready for the T5. This is a good time to change your rear main seal whenever you're back here. No matter if you did it last month or a week, if you get this thing, you want to change it. All right, well, there you go. There they are side by side. And boy, what a difference. This is the AOD that came out. And I mean, this thing is a monster. There's no way you could pick this up by yourself with the torque converter and everything in it. It's too heavy. But they say you can easily move around by yourself. So I'm seeing a difference of well over a hundred pounds. So um, we'll be getting rate reduction and uh, we'll have a T5 in there, which is what I've wanted. But I just wanted to show you guys the size difference and uh, make a note of the weight. Now we're ready to switch our pedal assembly, which I've already got in the uh, automatic, which is just the brake one out. And all you gotta do to disconnect it is there's a rubber line on this, you pull off. There's a center on the side, you'll pull a keeper out. It'll slide off, you can slide it onto the new one like so. And there are four 13s that hold it in and one 10, you'll loosen those. People, you don't have to take the steering rack out if you just take this quadrant off the pedals will go flat and you can finagle it in there i got this one out without pulling the uh, steering column and i'm going to get this one out and in from the parts car and into this car same deal with the steering racks and there you go, there we go. just like that three pedals in there yeah. thumbs up okay Hit it. Let go. Hit it. Let go. Hit it. Oh yeah. And we got brake lights, huh? What about All right, next you're gonna wanna get your measurement for the, your transmission tunnel because uh, the T5 stick and uh, <clears throat> this whole area isn't gonna actually come through your automatic tunnel because it's smaller. So you're gonna have to cut some of the metal out in the car not much but uh what you can do i took the stick off and then i put this cardboard over i got a razor and it's the exact shape and then i actually went and put this in the car as a template and uh used a sharpie to outline where i have to cut and it's really not that much so coming back in the car you can take your template and it should sit somewhere about there so you can see on the top right and bottom right and that it just hangs over a bit so you actually won't be able to get this in to put the stick on to make the bolt so you'll just have to cut the we're just gonna cut a half inch up basically just square that off and i believe it should fit <clears throat> all right next we're gonna start uh putting your clutch and your flywheel back on the bell housing getting ready for the transmission I highly recommend you get your flywheel if you're using the same one uh, resurfaced and this is a good time to update your clutch or get a new one since everything's out since it's such a pain to get to. I went and got a stage two and uh, we're going to put this in right now. So now that your car is going to be a man you're going to need a pilot bushing or a bearing and this will come in most kits or you can get it from the auto parts store and you'll need a tool to, which is like this, it has fittings. So you find the right size fitting for this, use a hammer and you'll simply punch this in. And this is just for the very front piece of the input shaft to spin so there's no wobble. Uh, the input shaft gears are what turn it, but the front of it kind of just spins in this. So you'll need one, otherwise your input shaft will wobble around. They're for like $25, but you will need this as your first piece. And there you go, it took about 10 wax with that steel hammer and it's in there. Now you wanna put your spacer on first and then your flywheel. This is a good time to get some new hardware. So I got some ARP flywheel bolts. You'll put some blue uh, thread sealer on these and torque them to 75 to 80 foot pounds. 
All right, after you torque all your flywheel bolts, you wanna put your clutch on itself with the springs facing out. You can put the aligning tool into the pilot bearing with the clutch on it to hold it while you put your pressure plate on. Next, you'll want to get your pressure plate and slide that over all of it, lining it up on the three dial pins on your flywheel to get all the holes lined up. And you'll put the six bolts in, they're 10 millimeters, and torque them to 15 to 20 foot pounds. Make sure that uh, you can get this tool in and out good. Put a couple bolts in and make sure you can get it in and out because it's going to make it real easy. Uh, if it's not aligned, when you go to make the transmission, it's going to be difficult. So now that all six uh, pressure plate bolts are tied, this is what I meant. You want to make sure you can get that tool out and in easily because uh, this is simulating your input shaft. So otherwise you're going to have a hell of a time making this if it doesn't. But yeah, ours is going in and out easy. And there's your flywheel clutch and pressure plate. Now we're going to get the bell housing on. Next, you're going to want to separate your bell housing from your T5 itself. To do this, you'll need to break the four 15 millimeter bolts on the back of the breaker bar. They'll be on there pretty tight. And then you'll want to clean your bell housing with brake clean. Now would be a good time to replace your fork and throttle bearing and pivot if you needed to. My kit came with all new ones, so that's them installed. We'll give it a cleaning and then we'll mount this on the back of the engine and now would be a good time to for your bearing retainer sleeve there's these four 10 bolts you can take these off lmr makes a modernized harder steel cast one and it's a good idea to replace the stock uh cast iron and it's just these four bolts you take them off, separate it, you throw this away, new uh, bearing and seal on the new one when it arrives, back on. It's a good idea to change all these uh, parts while it's out. I mean, this is a lot easier transmission to take out than the AODE, but it's still dropping your exhaust, your drive line to do any work on it. So while it's out and it's in front of you, it's good to change these parts. And these are uh, four 13s, not 10s, my bad. And there you go. Bell housing on, really easy. They're 16s and you'll use this universal with a, about a foot long extension. And that gets you in there perfectly. And uh, you'll torque these 28 to 30 foot pounds. And uh, you can put your starter back in at this point. Next, you want to route your clutch cable. I have a uh, firewall adjuster, so that'll differ, but you're gonna basically have to drill in your own self tapper to hold it. You'll run it in the hole here. Uh, I have mine going above the motor mount or below the motor mount and above the K member. There's a good little spot. So I have mine running right in the middle here above this K-member and below the motor mount and it goes right down the side of the uh, oil pan. You'll need to order a retainer. It looks like that. And it'll come through the bottom, through this hole in the bottom of the transmission. You'll plug that in and put the retainer over it. I got an adjustable. I have to hook it up to the quadrant up top to pull the slack out, but I'm not going to do that until I put in the transmission. Now you can put your transmission in, so just like the AOD, you'll get it back on your jack underneath. You'll make your input shaft through your pressure plate and your clutch, stab it into the pilot bearing. Once you get uh, like a half inch gap, you can put your four bolts in. Don't tighten it all the way to seat with the, the bolt, try and get it in uh freely and then uh then you can tighten these next you can plug your transmission harness in it'll go in here i rewrapped mine 
and it's just the two and you'll want to run it down on the passenger side through there to the bottom of your transmission okay so now this next part with your cross member now this only it depends on the mustang thumbs line up i've talked to a lot of people they say there's lines up some people's don't mine did not line up so as you can see my holes don't line up for where the original cross member went they're actually like an inch forward so i've made an adapter plate out of the exhaust hanger since i have a custom exhaust i used the two holes that i do not work for against the transmission i took a measurement for where the mount will end up i went and bought some bolts that i'll now put through that i went to a fab shop they use a drill press to cut these holes it's about a quarter inch thick steel and this will be my adapter plate to cover uh the missing ground so this is a technique to do this but some people's do line up mine just happened to be off my uh mounts where the cross member go are just an inch back so this is one way of addressing that so you can put your mount on get the jack out of here i've already reinstalled my drive line you can do that as well so here's a better shot of the cross member that i uh made the plate for so as you can see, the mounts were about a full inch or more back. So I used that exhaust hanger. I cut the hanger part off on both sides to make it flat. And uh, I put the mount in the spot where it goes. You can see the difference in those holes that I got uh, drill pressed that I marked out. So this plate's pretty thick. It's sturdy enough to hold it. And it's just a little adapter plate. That's one way to do it. That's if they don't line up. Some people do, some don't. It still looks good. It's not at a dramatic angle. It's literally an inch back. The plate's strong enough to support it. There's no jack. I mean, it's in. You could uh, put your clutch cable through if you haven't already. Put your drive line. You can hoist it back up. I'm gonna hoist mine a little more and we're gonna go through the gears and see if it works. Also at this time on the driver's side, there's the two plugins. You ran your harness down. You can uh, zip tie and run it in a nice pattern that you like. And you'll have one plug in here. It's an all thread. You can't mix it up. That's your flat one with the rubber. And your speedo sensor, which is in the back towards the tail shaft. Those are your only two sensors. And uh, that'll include all the work for your harness. Now your last step before reassembling uh, your interior and putting your console back together and putting your seat back in is to switch computers now you can't run it with the auto computer you'll need a manual t4 mo or you can use uh like a tuning chip i got mine done by ted jenkins at tuning innovations you can find him on facebook at tuning innovations and he flashed my auto computer to run manual specs so that uh saved me having to find a t4 mo and basically you just need to lace in these four 5.5 bolts you remove your kick panel, it's just held in by this one screw and it'll come out. Release those bolts and you'll have to wiggle the ECU down and uh, you disconnect it from the back and change it if you're gonna do an actual ECU swap or if you get a chip like I did, tuned by somebody, you'll enter it in this port. You can reassemble that and you can start putting uh, your interior back together in your seat because uh, the job's basically done. You'll wanna fill your transmission with fresh transmission fluid. Make sure all your bolts are tightened to spec, put your interior together, give it a fire up. Uh, want the back wheels lifted off the ground and you'll wanna see if they turn uh, by going in first gear, you might. Well, now the moment of truth. Fuel pump on.
got it. A ALDE to a T5 swap, how to do it your own in your own driveway. The only help I had was from a three-year-old and a four-year-old and uh, we got it done. It was kind of hard, not so really. Good project if you're looking to get into your car and try something new, this just might be something and I hope these steps can help you. I had a hell of a good time and it was fun to make this video. But now uh, it's time to go and uh, take it for a rip and see how it runs before I put the entire uh, exhaust back on and put the interior back together. But I couldn't be more happy. We got an AODE out of our 95 and we're finally at five speed. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe, please. I put a lot of effort into this and uh, yeah, we made it happen. Thank you.